Hi everyone, my name is Vilas and I'm going to be talking about how to invest in developer experience with a goal to reduce barriers for continuous delivery. I'll start with a little bit about myself. Um, for the last decade or so, my focus has been on improving developer productivity. So I focus on enabling developers using continuous integration, continuous delivery, pipelines, uh, providing them with tools to improve the quality of their delivery. Uh, I've also practiced chaos engineering uh, for the last 10 years or so. And my current passion is around performance testing and analysis and learning more about cloud costs, optimization, how to use those tools well. So before I go ahead, I want to provide a statement and then we'll delve more into that statement. DevX is not DevOps. I want to make sure that we look at this from a perspective of what DevX really is. DevX, in my opinion, enables DevOps. So that begs the question, what is DevOps? And then we'll talk more about the definition of DevX as well. So for me, DevOps is a set of practices. It is a set of principles. Um, it provides you with a um, set of rules that allows you to push forward value to your customer as soon as possible in the safest way possible. It's not the name of a team. It's not the name of an organization that does the deployment for somebody else. It is about using CI CD as it is truly meant to be continuous integration and enable continuous deployment into production. This means that the developing teams own not just the build, the test, but also the deployment as well as the monitoring in production to learn from. It. So really the cycle is you develop, you test, release, which means the value is now flowing all the way to the customer and then you repeat the entire process. So in a way, DevOps is about flow in the system and it's about the value stream. How do you enable that for a given product and how does the development team enable themselves to do that? So what is developer experience? Developer experience is all about allowing the developer to feel joy as they contribute their code into this process. It's about enabling them so that at no point they feel that there is any friction. So it's about removing that friction and giving them tools to check in code quickly, to build quickly, to have rapid pipelines uh, that get to production, but at the same time providing them with good feedback that they can act on that can potentially help their customer. So DevX is automation tools. It should be simple and easy to use for any developer as self-service as possible. So you do not have to file tickets, wait a bit for someone else to help you, etc. It allows developers to make changes with confidence. And if they run into issues, they can debug fairly easy. So before I jump into what DevX looks like for today, let's talk a little bit about the history evolution of software delivery from the 2000s to now. I'm going to very quickly talk to you about what it was in the 2000s. So delivery in the 2000s, early 2000s or to late 2000s, was a longer release cadence. Uh, when I first uh, joined and started working for my first uh, company, it was about a 6 to 12 month release cadence. And sometimes we would ship software on CDs uh, and it would be tarballs and things like that. There used to be a two month QA and certification cycle. So very over the wall siloed approaches, very waterfall, very few agile adoptions. Many companies started adopting more and more agile methodologies towards the end of the uh, decade. And by the time AWS came out, which, came out, which is about 2006, 2007, uh, that's when people started realizing, hey, we can actually use cloud, but there's barely any cloud adoption large scale. So DevX in the 2000s was limited as well. Uh, developer experience was about, there would be a team called core services, which would provide common libraries. It would say, hey, if you need something that is common, uh, we will write it and we will provide it for all the teams that need to use it. Uh, there were good um, IDEs, right? Uh, Eclipse, Visual Studio, uh, popular ones come to mind. Uh, there were build and test systems which were written which used to run as part of the continuous integration service. So Maven was a popular build system. Um, Hudson, which now is known as Jenkins, was a continuous integration server. 
This was DevX. This meant that delivery was not as fast as we needed it to be for the 2020s. So today, delivery is demanded as, as often as possible with high quality. What does that mean? It means daily, hourly release cadences. Uh, the expectation is for the development team to be doing full cycle development, which means they write the code, they contribute the tests, make sure that it is valid in terms of the acceptance criteria provided by the product managers. They release it and they monitor uh, the traffic for any issues in partnership with SREs. And if there is any uh, learnings, they will fill that right in and the code cycle continues. It's all about optimizing the value stream for the product. And there is heavily cloud native deployment. So what kind of investments in DevX would give us that kind of improvement in delivery? I'm going to focus on three different aspects of the dev life cycle. One is onboarding, when the dev comes in and starts uh, working at a new team or a new company. The second is their day to day. And the third is when they indulge in large scale refactoring or modernization uh, projects. Let's focus on onboarding first. Currently, most companies have a process that goes as set up your computer, get training on the code base, get access to the right kind of cloud uh, solutions, and then write your code, check out the code, write your code, compile it. And then eventually you check in something that is a contribution to the company's um, code base. This process can sometimes take longer than three months. In some companies, it can take up to six months, depending on the training and the access and things like that. A lot of tickets going back and forth, lots of uh, back and forth in terms of what code base it can contribute to, et cetera. But let's imagine what investments can change this. An automated workstation setup, along with sensible defaults and rapid prototyping tools that come in baked in into the laptop uh, tend to be very make things easier. Imagine if a developer could just open their laptop the first day and they could find all the software that they need already on the laptop, along with all of the instructions to use it. Right? So streamlined self-training model, modules. And uh, most companies do this, which is an onboarding buddy. Um, the proposal that uh, an investment can be made in is uh, to actually have an onboarding buddy share responsibilities for the first week so that at the end of the first week, they can release small changes to prod. Doesn't have to be a huge um, sensitive change. It can be something as small as a bug fix. It could be something um, that could be a small change that does not affect customer flow. So ideally, we could get this down to one week, right? Where we could have a computer set up. And this is something that is possible. And we have done this in the past. You set up, you train on your own pace in the first couple of days, you check out code, you commit your first change within the first week, and it's released as soon as it's committed into the uh, merge tree. Let's move on to day to day. So now that the developer is onboarded, they are now contributing day to day. And during the day to day, they are building, they are refreshing their setup, and they want to make sure that the pipelines are running optimally. So investments that DevX teams would make in is to make sure that the CI-CD tooling availability is high. At any point, if the CI-CD pipeline isn't working or is not resourced well, then you cannot push innovation quickly to production. The customers might be waiting for something that is not delivered on time. If there is an issue, they may not see the fix as quickly as possible. Code to test to deploy, ideally within 60 minutes, that's one hour. Performance testing and tuning within the pipeline and observability across every single stage of the pipeline, from test to stage to production and beyond. This is all of the investments we need. In short, this is the picture, right? Um, we plan along with the product owners, the team then codes it. There's verification, profiling, which is performance testing, maybe resiliency testing, chaos engineering, deployment, uh, to like blue, green, uh, red, black, whatever the environments are, production monitoring. Production monitoring then finds issues, which are then coded back into the, the fixes for which are coded back in. And this, this cycle continues. This is the day to day. Let's focus on refactoring. Refactoring is crucial when there is 
either a large piece of the uh, code base that is sensitive and needs uh, to be broken up into smaller pieces, or it needs to be rewritten for different factors, or it needs to be uh, updated in order to reflect the newest and best technologies. And this can be a very hard uh, job for any dev to do. They will depend on the setup that's provided in order to make sure that they can trust their own changes, which means the investments in DevX have to be in quality gating and guardrails. They need to have top-notch debugging tools. They need to have great security and compliance checks because you do not want to introduce new vulnerabilities while you're trying to fix things. You need to have solid code coverage thresholds so that you can stop if there is any issues with unit testing. And you need to have code visibility so you can understand the complexity, map it out visually so that you can learn more and then contribute back. These are investments in refactoring. So we talked about three of these areas. Uh, let's talk a little bit about if we made these investments, would there be a return? What is the return on investment? So let's take a theoretical scenario. Let's say we have about 50 developers in the company. For onboarding, we talked about we could save onboarding from three months to about a week. That's about 10 or so weeks per developer of onboarding savings. A daily savings because of shortened pipelines, reduced time to debug, so let's imagine your pipeline goes on 50%, from 30 minutes to 15 minutes. Your debugging time goes from half an hour to five minutes. Uh, your changes no longer require multiple JIRAs and approvals. On average, let's say it saves an hour per day. For about 200 productive days in a year, that's about 200 hours of savings annually. And the intangible thing is rapid innovation and feedback is enabled. Let's take these rough numbers. If we do these rough, take these rough numbers, if we assume 50 devs, for 50 devs to onboard, if we onboard them within a week, as compared to three months, we can save $2 million as a one-time saving. If there are 50 devs that are saving an hour every single day in debugging and fixing things, we are saving a $1 million annually. And if we assume, this is obviously assumption that the dev rate is about $100 per hour, so about 4K a week. These are not numbers that are uh, marked in stone. It could vary for different scenarios and the assumptions could vary as well. But there's an example of what it could look like if you were to work like this. So the big takeaways uh, from this discussion is that DevOps by itself cannot be uh, achieved unless there are good investments made in DevX, which means the developer experience, the developer joy is what the investments have to be in. And that means providing great tooling, providing top-notch automation, and removing any kind of friction within the developer process. Enablement is what ensures the effectiveness within engineering. If the developers are not enabled, they will find a way, but that way will not be repeatable, nor would it benefit others. And finally, we talked about three stages of the dev lifecycle, uh, specifically onboarding, day-to-day, uh, -day, and then refactoring. But in reality, all stages of the dev, dev lifecycle need DevX, all the way from onboarding to offboarding. Uh, but in order for us to do that, it's important for us to understand what does it mean? What is the return on investment? And what I showed was one example uh, of that calculation. Uh, that's all I have uh, for this group. If you have any other questions, please reach out to me via social media or we can talk over the platform engineering Slack. Thank you so much for your time. Take care.